All right, here's our do loop. So starting with the flow chart, um, what a do loop does, and the biggest difference here is that the first part of our flow chart is the body of the loop. It first executes the statements in the body of the loop, and only after it does that does it evaluate the condition. So it evaluates the Boolean expression. If the expression evaluates to true, it goes and runs the body of the loop again. And then it evaluates the condition. If it's still true, it runs the body of the loop again. And then it evaluates the condition. Eventually, that condition will be false, and we finish the do loop. So you can think of a do loop as, an, as a while loop turned on its head. The body comes first, and the while comes last. So let's look at what the syntax looks like for this structure. So we're going to create another method just to document and illustrate our do loop. Um, so again, this method is going to be public, static void, and let's call it do example. It's going to be very similar to the while example and very similar to the for example in that we want to print the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So by the time we finish this, we'll have three different looping structures all doing the same thing. So this looping structure is called the do loop. Um, it's also sometimes called, and I, I prefer this, a do while loop. It reminds up the, us of the actual syntax, and I think it reads better. And so there's two parts to this, two steps it takes. What does a do while loop do first? Well, first, it executes the body of the loop. That's unusual. No other looping structure does that. And then second, it evaluates the condition. And if that condition is true, it executes the body of the loop again. And if that condition is false, it continues execution after the loop. While the order is different, a do while loop still has the same four elements that a while loop has and that a for loop has. So to print the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we still need a loop variable. So that will be our int count. And we still need to initialize it. And we'll initialize it to 1, just like we've done in the other two examples. So I'll keep annotating this. This is the initialization step. Here's where the syntax is different. Our do while loop starts with the keyword do and is immediately followed by a pair of curly brackets in which we place the body of the loop. So the next part will be the body of the loop where we print count. That's the body. And inside this do while loop, we do still need to update our loop variable. That's identical to what we are used to with the while loop. So we're still going to have count plus plus where we update the loop variable. After the closing curly bracket that defines the body of our loop is where we actually do a while statement. So we'll have the keyword while. We'll have a pair of parentheses just like we're used to with a regular while loop. And we put our condition here. While count is less than or equal to 5. And then to make it clear to the Java compiler that this is the end of the do while statement, we do need a semicolon here as well. And so this is where the condition goes. And then like we've been doing in the other methods, we'll print done as well. So the difference here is really just that the body is executed before we check the condition. Yeah? So could you say, like, the, 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 
Wild. Yeah, that would work for sure. Absolutely. We could, yeah, th definitely think of it as a while do. Because I like the do while because when I read this, I read do print the value of count, increment count by one while count is less than or equal to five. I'm like, hey, that reads pretty well. I like that. Heather, question? Oh, that's a great question. Like, who cares, right? Um, to be clear, we don't need three looping structures. We could do everything we need to do if we only had while loops. After all, that's what we do in Python, right? We could do everything we need to do if we only had four loops. It would just maybe be awkward at times. But each looping structure is a little bit more natural and therefore easier to read and less likely to result in bugs in different situations. So the while loop itself, I think, is good when we don't know how many times the loop is going to run. Maybe we're calling a method as part of that condition and we're waiting for something to be returned. Um, that might be a good time to use a while loop. I personally think the for loop is best when we know we know how many times that loop is going to run. It's going to run five times. It's going to run 12 times. It's going to run based on this calculation we do. Um, the advantage of the for loop, just kind of review a little bit from yesterday, the advantage of the for loop here is that three of the four critical elements of our loop are all part of the for statement. That's a bad example. Let's look at the better example. Um, are all part of the for statement, so we're not going to forget the initialization, the condition, or updating the loop variable. Only the body is separate, and that, that pretty much makes sense. I think the best example of why we would want to use a do while loop is when we know that the body is going to execute at least once. And we don't want to have to artificially make sure the condition is true the first time we evaluate it like we would in a while loop. A good example of this is if we're validating user input. Let's say we ask the user to enter um, an integer greater than 10. We know we're going to ask them that question at least once. And then we're going to validate their input. And if it's greater than 10, fantastic, we can move on. But if it's not greater than 10, we're going to ask them again. And so that lends itself to a do while loop type approach. But we never have to use this. And of the three looping structures, this is probably the one we use least often. 